Support for the Takeover Lounge is provided by the Arts Foundation for Tucson and Southern Arizona, funded by the City of Tucson and Pima County, with additional support from the Community Foundation for Southern Arizona. Welcome to the Takeover Lounge. What is good, everybody? Welcome to the Takeover Lounge. It is your boy Z Give tapped in with my co-host Daniela. <laughs> yep, she's out here. You know what I'm saying? I had to unmute my mic real quick. I was going off and I didn't have my mic on. But it's 2021. It's a new year. <laughs> Welcome to season three of the Takeover Lounge. Y'all see saw the new little intro we had. If you were rocking with us from before. And, yo, we are here with a special, special guest right in between us, right smack dab in the middle. We got Mr. Will Clay in the building. What is good, brother? What's the deal, man? How you doing? Man, we are chilling. It's it's a good Friday. I mean, amongst everything that's been happening throughout the week and the chaos, it's just good to be in a spot where I can feel like we can feel like ourselves, you know what I'm saying, and be here and talk music and track and field and all that good stuff, man. Love. Love, yeah, man. It's definitely good to be around love with all the, the hate going on in the world, man. It's definitely Facts. Being in this type of vibe for sure. Yo, so we appreciate you being here, man. So first things first, man. Danella's gonna bless us off with the first question of 2021 with Mr. Will Clay. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So, well, the first question I have for you is what sports politics did you encounter in college and as an Olympian who had to deal with the Olympic governing body? Um, like, like, what type of like bullshit I had to deal with? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, in college, I didn't really deal with no none of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. College was mm -hmm. pretty smooth. Um, for me, college was pretty smooth. You know, I I went to college. I graduated from high school early. Went to college. I was 17, and from like as soon as I stepped on campus, they took care of me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They held me down. You know, even to the point to where, like, we had this thing called, uh, like, an opportunity fund. And, like, mm -hmm. it would be, like, times of the year where, like, you you want to go home to see your family, but you probably don't got no bread. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was this fund that they had for us that they would allow us to, like, buy tickets to, like, go home, like, and stuff like that. So, like, just little stuff like that was cool. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, it wasn't – it wasn't too, like – to business, to mm -hmm. like business, like in college, you know what I'm saying? We we were just just athletes that went to school. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't too much of the business. But once I got once I went pro and uh got involved with the Olympics and mm -hmm. and shoe companies, mm. like that type of stuff, then it switched up, you know what I'm saying? Like to the point to where you kind of feel like a slave a little bit. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Not, I wouldn't even call it a slave. I wouldn't call it a slave. I would call it a hoe. Oh, okay. I would call. I would. I would say track athletes is like, for lack of a better term, hoes. Mm -hmm. And 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 we on the track. Right. We, uh, no pun intended. We on the track. <laughs> and uh, the shoe companies, and the agents, and uh, the Olympic Committee. Is the pimps. Mm. You feel me? And the reason that is is because we don't have power as a as a as a as a group of athletes. We don't have no power because we don't unite. Right. You know, with with basketball, you got the, the players union, football players union. We don't have that for track. So like when somebody get done wrong, there's no nobody to hold the powers that be accountable. Mm. And so like Take for instance, like I don't know, you could be you could be the the num top five sprinter, you know what I'm saying, of all time in the history of track and field. And a, a sponsor could just one day be like, you know what, we don't want you no more. Mm -hmm. We're just we we're gonna we're gonna cut your contract off. You know what I'm saying? We think you're getting old. You know, there's somebody new coming up. 
we're gonna just we're gonna cut off your contract and uh send you on your way. <laughs> wow. Now you now you have no income. Like right. track and field is based off of shoe sponsors. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And like like even right now, a lot of people in track and field are unsigned. No it when when twenty twenty one started, they have no income because after the Olympics was projected to be in twenty twenty. Right. So their their contracts were most of our contracts are based on Olympics, so they're four year cycles. Right. So like somebody has signed a contract and it'll end the year that the Olympics is. So you go mm-hmm. to Olympics, you do your thing, whatever you do for the for the for the company, and then right. and then you get on. So after when it when the Olympics got pushed back to twenty twenty one. Mm-hmm. People's contracts ended in 2020, Ooh. and the companies are not renewing them because they got to cut. They got but they got to make budget cuts because they lost money mm-hmm. last year. Right. So like right now, you got athletes, professional athletes, no income. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Trying to figure out where they're gonna train at because right. a, lot of, a lot of places are shut down. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and we don't have nowhere to compete to make money. Right now, there's no track meets. Like, you can go to track meets and make money, too. Right. But all the track meets is getting canceled. You know what I'm saying? And we don't have no, no like, union to where it's like, okay, like, the Olympics is putting up $117 billion into making the Olympics. Mm-hmm. We don't have no fund to take care of the athletes during right. the, none of that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, those type of business things is just – you know, it can get hard because it was time. It was times where I was in that position. Like after the Olympics, I was no. The year before the Olympics, I didn't have no contract. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Mm-hmm. And then the year after the Olympics, I didn't have no contract. I had to go out and hustle and mm. like find. I had to go find like my own lane. You know what I'm saying? As far right. as track, like go. I was signed with like a different type of com- company that didn't that wasn't involved with like try like not the major. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and um but that's just in me the hustle you know what I'm saying I always right. I'm always you know gonna keep my faith in God and, and, and grind to, to make something happen so you know I, I, I always made a way and I always came out on top right better than mm-hmm. I was before but but as a as a like 24 year old that hasn't even reached his peak yet mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying it, I I uh I felt like I did so much for for the company that I was with at the time. They just cut me off, let me go. You know what I'm saying? It was just like peace. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I see you. I see you in the hallway. You don't even speak to me no more. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, mm. like that. You know what I'm saying? That's where you start to be like, damn, this this game is cold. Like how you definitely. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like like on some like pimp shit. Like mm-hmm. oh, you don't you not you know what I'm saying? You not on on the track for me no more. <laughs> right, like right. I don't want nothing to do with you, baby. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? you know what I'm saying. Like that's that's the type of vibe it is. But you know, it's like it's it's a few people that are like me that have the same type of you know what I'm saying mindset that's trying to change the game. You know what I'm saying. Definitely. Like so for me, like it's we just trying to find a solution. You know, right? Like, mm-hmm. We know what the problem is, but at this point. It's like we're not about to just sit back and complain. You know, we we trying to make solutions to these problems to where hopefully we can reap the benefit, but mm. for sure the next generation gonna reap the benefit from it. So definitely. Yeah. That's so dope. I mean, that's I didn't realize that's what went into track and field. I mean, I didn't I don't okay. realize how y'all got paid and how little they look out for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's cutthroat, bro. Definitely. It's cutthroat. And it's, it's like definitely like the music industry game, definitely as well. I mean, the powers that be, like you look at these record labels. I mean, they're like these these true sponsors in the in the mm-hmm. sense of not giving these artists the money that they deserve, you know. And then once you once they did their thing with you, they're like, all right, next next person, who we getting? Please, you know what I'm saying. But the but the the record, the, I mean, the the music entertainment business is, I think it's more cut though, because yeah. you dealing with like. When I get paid, I get paid. That's my money. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you an artist, you get loans. You getting a loan, mm-hmm. and we're gonna give you we're gonna give you a million dollars. But 
that million dollars has to go towards well not has to but supposed to go towards ah, 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 xyz right you know what I'm saying in order to create um a project to sell you know what i'm saying right mm-hmm. and and uh a lot of people don't use all of that for that so now like you done probably went and got a whole bunch of jewelry you done bought cribs cars whatever you whatever you put your money towards facts and and then you got to pay taxes on that. You got to pay taxes mm-hmm. on the loan. That's crazy. Yep. <laughs> That's crazy. So you got to pay taxes on that. And then it's like, okay, you make a project, it do cool, but it don't bring back the money that you made. The money that you that you got in your advance. So right. now you got to now you got to give up more of your. You got to give up more of your rights, more of your mm-hmm. masters, more of mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, more percentage. Yeah. And so and so then you start to be more of a slave to the label. You have to start doing more of what they yep. want to do. Okay, we this is the sound right now. We need you to create a record that is going to blow. Mhm. And you try and try and try, you probably trying to do some shit that's not you. You know what I'm right. saying? You're probably like you probably going through depression, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You probably, you know what I'm saying, that a lot of artists, you know what I'm saying, they, they get on drugs in order to, to create, you know what I'm saying? Right. Now, you heavily on that, you know what I'm saying? God forbid, you heavily on that. And it, it's it's sad, but like, the artists that pass away that are signed to labels, the labels, is the labels low key is eating off of that. Yeah. Because if you look at anybody numbers when they pass away, they go through the roof. Facts, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh damn, who owns that music? Mm-hmm. Who owns you know what I'm saying? The labels. Yep. <laughs> yep. So now they, and now they don't. Who they? Who do they got? To, who are they gonna pay it to? Yeah, they you can get a percentage to the family, but that's only a small percentage. <laughs> if your family, if your family know how to go get it, right? Exactly. You know that's the whole other thing. The whole other thing. So like, the music business is cold. It's cold too. But like I feel like right now, it's a shift. I pray to God that Drake go go independent and change the whole game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If he's not if he's not already, you know what I'm saying? I hope you know what I'm saying he just stay independent because that'll just make it'll create a shift, mm-hmm. you know, for the whole game because he he's the greatest artist probably of all time. Um, it's all time. I think so. Ooh. When we when wow. we talking about when we just talking about we just talking about like. The numbers of it all. You know okay, all right. Not, not like he's not my person. Not like he's not my favorite artist of all time. But okay, okay. But we're talking about like the Michael Jacksons and Princes and all like, right. Frank is up there with them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We double checking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you was double checking. Get on me. <laughs> you get on my head. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think a lot of artists now is like trying to do it the independent way. You know yeah. I mean? And you might, you might go do a deal. But you get out of it, and you, and then you really like get on your, you know what I'm saying, your shit and, and turn Definitely. up. But uh, yeah, man, it's like for me, I I I feel like I love sports, mm-hmm. I love music, but I want to be able to, I want to be able to have the freedom to do it on my terms, right? You know, mm-hmm. and so that's the. That's the lane that I'm creating for myself and, and, and the people that's around me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I wanna I wanna be able to create like track meets for young athletes to go to and get mm-hmm. stupid paid. Like right. like how Tiger Woods and them is getting paid to play mm-hmm. golf. Like you come to the track mm-hmm. meet and you're gonna leave with an M. Wow. You know, like mm-hmm. tight vibes. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like to where they not they don't gotta go through the type of stuff we go through. And at right. the same time I'm trying to I'm trying to have move like move my label in a way that we take care of artists. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, uh what J Waves and Don P, we three of us own Desert Water Records. Mm-hmm. And like the whole thing of it all is to just serve serve the artists in a way that they could not be served anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? You gonna right. 
you're going to be able to own your music. You're going to be able to get your mm -hmm. money. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, when you do good business, it's only going to come back, you know what I'm saying, to you tenfold. So, Facts. you know, it's just trying to do it the right way for for the for the next person. Yeah, and that's a, it's a beautiful thing to, to watch. I mean, you grow this this record label into something that's, you know, beneficial to artists and not hindering their success. And you're not taking a big ass percentage off top and giving them loans that they it's like impossible to pay back. And it's so dope to see that. But I want to talk about how you got to that point. How did you you were like you were doing track and then you switched over to this music lane. But while you're doing track, you had the big ass song with YG. I mean. I don't give a fuck. And then you were you were off the radar for music for a while. Mm -hmm. And then the record label came about. I just want to know how, how everything just came to be in chronological order, at least. <laughs> so chronologically, I, I started doing music before I started to like okay. on track. Yeah. So like, I was already making music with Don, Waves, and Mitch. Mm. like way back you know what i'm saying way back probably like i started making music with don probably when we was like 10 10 years old 10 11 years old and then high school mitch was a he was a drummer at the church mm -hmm. and then waves was like oh he had crazy bars even back then you know what i'm saying right and then i was just like a vocalist like i could sing you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so like we would just make music like but we never we never would put it out i think i had one i had one record with waves that he put out back then okay and then um it was like 2012 11 okay mitch was going to school at full sale college in in uh, orlando right i was in college in gainesville florida and it's like a two-hour drive mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so like you know what I'm saying? I'm chopping it up like, hey, bro, like, send me some beats. Like, I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I would just drive out there to, like, cut records. I was just like, I'm going to just put a project together. Mm -hmm. Put it on SoundCloud. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to put some shit on SoundCloud. And then um, I go to the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? I do my thing at the Olympics. I come back. Come back. Yeah, no big deal. He just did his thing at Olympics, you know, <laughs> won a medal. Hey, nothing. Hey, it's that's all right. Left some <laughs> light came back. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, I go to live as I come back and I go straight to LA, celebrate. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm turned up in LA. You know what I'm saying? Any club that was popping at that time, I was in there. And I was I don't even think I was 21 yet, bro. I think they was I was coming through the back, like on some like, yeah, like back. I mean, hey, you got the gold, you got you got a medal around your chest. I mean, they let you in whenever. <laughs> they were showing me love. I'm a young dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might have been 21. I might have just turned 21. Okay. Um, but uh yeah, I end up at this strip club. And uh, I'm with the homies, and they like, hey, yeah, that's YG, but you see, bro. You see a whole corner. You see a whole corner of the strip club, and it's red. <laughs> the whole corner is red. Right. You see YG at the top. I'm like, dang, yeah, that is YG. At this time, like, you know, I'm I I had been listening to like Tooted and Booted in, in high mm -hmm. school. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, uh, the real Four Fingers was mm -hmm. like we was listening to that in high school, and so I knew of I knew of YG, and I was like, yeah, he tight. And so bro was like, yeah, you want to go like meet him? I was like, yeah, for sure. So we link up, you know what I'm saying? We chop it up. And uh, it was just love. Like we just was cool on some like mutual respect type. Mm -hmm. And uh, like they just like really like just brought me in like a homie. And so the next week I go to Arizona and now I'm turned up in Arizona like, but I'm like bringing all the homies out like. right. At, this was the first time that like we started like doing bottles and sections and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I'm like, hey, yeah, come on, like y'all, that's on me. <laughs> Go celebrate. So Mitch came out one night, and uh, I'm like, hey, Mitch, bro, I just linked up with YG in LA, like, and I think that I think that we could cut a record with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. West Coast type vibes. Right. And we could put it on my project. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was like, shoot, you know what I'm saying? Don't trip off of anything, just make some beats. 
Right. So he was like, but I don't make those kind of beats. I'm like, <laughs> you do today. Yeah. You figure it out, bro. Like, and just get creative. Right. So he go back to he go back to full sale. You know what I'm saying? I go, I go back to Gainesville. And uh I get a call from YG people and they're like, hey yeah, y'all pull up to the pull up to the studio. We in Florida. They in LA and we like, oh damn, we gotta we gotta like figure out a flight situation. Right. So we hop on a flight, and I think we leave like that weekend. We go out to LA for the weekend, and then um, yeah, we we get up get up in the studio. Miss start playing beats. Mm-hmm. As Miss playing beats, DJ Mustard walk in, Ooh. and uh, it was almost like a thing. It was like ah, uh, like yeah, little bro, put a little like well, let's get on a mustard beat. That's what like they was they was like mm, okay. Cause he, cause mustard on, right? And I was just like, man, but let hold on, like let bro play some, like let bro, you know what I'm saying? I think he got it, right? So YG go and he played one more beat, and he's just like going crazy, he like oh yeah, this the one, mm. and it was that beat. So he asked me, he like, you got something for it yet? I'm like, nah, cause at this time, bro, I ain't never, <laughs> I ain't never really been in no like major like big studio. I just recorded in closets and like right. Yeah. So like I'm I'm kind of low key like I'm like you know what I'm saying I'm comfortable <laughs> right yeah yeah so so uh I wouldn't should feel though in front of YG I mean like and it's like fifty bloods in the studio bro right you're like oh hold up let me just step outside real quick <laughs> it's, it's just me and Mitch right <laughs> and me, so like when I get in there man I'm sitting there the beat is just on loop I'm I'm just sitting there trying to write some. YG getting his haircut and he writing. As soon as the haircut got done, he hopped in the studio, he cut the hook, he cut the verse, and then he come out the booth. He like, that's tight. I'm like, yeah, that's tight. <laughs> and then he like, he like, uh, I gotta go, I gotta go make a club appearance. And he, mm. did, <laughs> he dipped out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. The, pressure, I- the pressure's on. <laughs> Right. Like, I'm trying to cut a verse, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I wasn't ever really on that type of, like, I wasn't in that type of bag, you know what I'm saying? I was right. in a different type of bag. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm cutting it, and they like, nah, bro, you got to turn up more. You got to turn up more. <laughs> and da, 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 da. And I'm hearing them in the booth on the headphone. I'm like, hey, turn up more. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, for sure. So, like, I had, you know what I'm saying, I had to get my energy right. And then um, I get done with my verse. YG come back from the uh, club, mm-hmm. and then uh, we just playing the record. Everybody going crazy in the studio. Like uh, they like, bro, this your first like real record like this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. They like this shit hard. Oh, yeah. That's wild. <laughs> so, and so uh, like fast forward, we after we done played it like 50 times, YG is like, hey, bro, like what you doing with this record? What you gonna do with it? Mm-hmm. I'm like, so I'm gonna put it on my project. I'm saying I'm working on a little mixtape, and uh, he was like, "Can I put it on my project?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, take that, take that <laughs> for sure." So, you know, he put it on his project, and and it was like a hit. You know what I'm saying one of the, the biggest records, and then um, so we shot a video. Like he hit me one day, like, "Hey, but we shooting a video like next week. Can mm-hmm. you, you pull up?" I'm like, shoot, yeah. <laughs> and me and Mitch again, again hop on a flight. Like, hey, <laughs> we go out there. I hit my homies from like that I grew up with in AZ. They drive out. You know what I'm saying to LA, my brother. And then, uh, yeah, we shot the video out there. And then, uh, like when it all when it when it all came out, like everybody just from everybody from AZ went crazy. Like hit me like, dang, boy, you like yeah. back. Record with YG, our eyes going up, it's going up. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for it to do that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I didn't know what to do next. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Like, and I'm I'm doing track, and I'm just like getting so much bread on on the track. So like, yeah, I'm like on some just like yeah, that was cool. But like you know what I'm saying, I'm really just doing my track. I'm on the track, doing my tracks. I'm training, whatever. Right. And um. Like, you disappear forever, and then I <laughs> and I disappear for some time. You know but 
another reason why I disappeared at that time was because I got a lot of like bad press because of that. Mm. Like mm. In, the track, in the track world, like they were saying I was a thug at that time. Like it was like, wow. we're yeah, they was like, th like this dude is a thug. Like, you know what I'm saying? The There was some like meet, meet directors, meet promoters that didn't want to let me come to their meets. You know what wow. I'm saying? Like even my, my sponsor at the time, was like, yeah, we can't endorse that type of like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But, at, but at the same time, wow. you know, you're working with rappers, other rappers, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, on the same vibe, but it was just like, it was weird. So like, yeah, I caught a lot of like flag and bad press for that. So it made me kind of like tuck into my shell, like to where right. I'm like, like, okay, like maybe I need to like chill out. Mm. Then, because like, I'm like, I always been somebody, I always been a person like big on, on my faith in God. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, always mm -hmm. do do it all. And um everyone know that know that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the record come out and they like, dang, well like, what do you like, you know what I'm saying? They was judging me, you know what I'm saying, on, on that on that song. And I right. was like, no, nah, I was just like, that's it's a record, it's art, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, like, definitely. You, know, you can't you can't say you can't speak on my relationship with God based mm -hmm. off of a song, one song that I put out. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So that all happened and I was just like, yeah, I'm about to just chill. I started trying to make different kind of music to, mm. to fit, you know what I'm saying? The whole Dude, narrative. Everybody, right. Yeah. And it just wasn't really me. And then uh, I wouldn't say, I would say till, it wasn't until like 20... 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. to where I really was like, fuck it, I'm gonna just do what I want. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then like that's when I really started to go up. Like mm -hmm. I'm oh, I'm gassing, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting right. my foot on the gas. Like mm -hmm. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? When nobody got to say, I know I'm I know I'm a dope artist and I know my I know my sound in my lane. Right. And I'ma just I'm gonna be in that. You know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. I just start gassing. I start <laughs> I just start gassing and like and that's why a lot of people kind of feel like I just came out of nowhere, but you know, it's it's a whole back story to like from when I started to make music. Like I've been making music for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just I wasn't in Arizona. I wasn't in the city, to, and mm -hmm. I wasn't promoting my music to Arizona. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I was mm -hmm. just you know what I'm saying low key, just doing it for the love of the music, for the art. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. It wasn't on no like trying to hand out flyers and selling mixtapes. It wasn't on that. It was just, right. you know what I'm saying? Me and my homies listen to it. I might put some on, on uh, SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it, though. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. But as of, as of like, 2017, I'm gassing. Like, I'm <laughs> I'm out. I'm in your face with it. You know right. Mm -hmm. That was the shift. That's crazy. I like, that's a, that's a whole crazy story. I mean, I want, I really, I don't watch. I read an article with Chris uh, Chris Chavez that he did with you in 2017, where he talked about this story, and you know, 2017 was three years ago. I mean, yeah. four years ago now. Yeah. So now hearing you speak about it, you like you matured a lot, definitely, just as a person and just as an artist as well. I mean, you dropped three projects in 2020, I believe. Right? You can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, but. Just hearing like just how you evolved as an artist and gave us different, you know, feels yeah. or different takes of Will. Will yeah. Clay, who like yeah. you got uh, Kill Will, which was like, yo, I'm coming out. I'm going to talk my shit. Let yeah. me do what I'm going to get off my chest. And then all that up to track five, I felt like was a little bit of a, what, what was it? 12 a.m. on the baseline where we got a little feel for for the next EP that was gonna drop, which was uh, what what was Slide for Love? Yep. And then I, I just love Slide. You just gave us the whole R and B feel for it. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like you gave us the Will Clay R and B type of vibe. So yeah. I want to know before we get into the break, how we got into how you transitioned from each one. It's all based off of how I was feeling at the time. Mm. Like the first. Yeah, the first project I dropped, Kill Will, like that was a that was a, a tough time. You know what I'm saying? Like that was just a really dark time for me. And I was 
I was uh I was in a space to I was I felt like I had to come out of like a dark place and mm -hmm. I felt like it was like a rocky moment like 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 you just got your ass beat mm -hmm. you back and you training and like you getting you know what I'm saying you getting prepared to like resurface you know what i'm saying and like really right. and really prove to the world that you like you that nigga you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and uh that was that was where i was at when i made will uh kill will you know what right saying? and that's why i called it kill will because it's based off of kill bill mm -hmm. and, and where um the the main i forget her name the lady oh what's her name i forget her name but she was paralyzed you know what i'm saying right on her back, you know what I'm saying? And she had to fight her way to get revenge mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. on on a man who tried to kill her, you know what I'm saying? Right. So um that was the whole concept of that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I got I got kicked on my ass, you know what I'm saying? I got to fight to get up out of this. Right. Then slide for the love was just like I was just me and my girl we just vibing. Right. We cool. It's, we when we in the quarantine, we just on some just chill. And we just chill. We just chill. Thanks. And I just wanted to make make a record like it felt like a record that I would a project that I would play on like a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And we just vibing. We like either like we cooking, cleaning, or whatever, or we just in the car just driving. And I Thanks. had I had uh just got this old school Benz. And uh, I was like, shoot, this sound like I'm not playing that. You know what I'm saying? And so right. like, that was the vibe for that. And then quoted the third project mm -hmm. I dropped in, um, in 2020 was, uh, it was during a time where we was going through a lot of racial issues. Right. A lot of our people was being killed. Mm -hmm. And and um, it was just my like rendition of what I went through as a young black kid in South Phoenix. Right. And, and so that's why that that project is it's uh, a little bit more rough, like mm -hmm. rugged, rough West Coast. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. But at the same time, you might have a couple little player records in there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying, I wanted to cap capture the essence of, like, um, a, a, for lack of a better term, a good kid in a mad city. You know what I'm saying? That's the feel I got, low-key, from and, that album. Uh, and, yeah, and that's what it was. Like, I was, I was really outside, and I was in the streets. I, I was around, like... I was on the South Side during the bloodiest time. You know what I'm saying? Right. I would never say I'm a gangster. I would mm -hmm. never say like I was like a super thug, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. Around all of that, I was just so happy to be in sports, and I just mm -hmm. I was respected by the streets. You know what I'm saying? Because I was around, and um, yeah, that was just like my whole like life at that time that was that was what that project was based off of Thanks. and um you know just seeing a lot of things going on in the world and that dealt with black and brown people mm -hmm. it just took me there like dang like i remember my run-ins with the cops i remember you know right. how, how things were when i you should i still go through it but like it was more so back then because i was just outside more back then you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so that was that. That's what you know. Kill Will was was based off of. So, I just I feel like with each project, it's just I gotta live and and feel a spark of something. Right. That I could build off of. You know what I'm saying. So like, un until you know, you feel that you really just you know you just kind of just cutting records, but you don't have no direction yet. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, a lot of some of those records, like some of the records on Slide for the Love was supposed to be on Quota. Uh, nah, it was supposed no. to be on uh 
Kill Will. And Ooh. something like the record on Kill Will was supposed to be on slot. It was a lot of the records like coincide, but they just didn't have no no place yet. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I like that. Yo, before we continue on, we're going to take a little break, a little halftime intermission. We're going to watch this episode of The Couch, number episode 13, I believe. I should know this. I mean, I do The Couch every week. I should know this episode 13. <laughs> so, man, Connor, if you're ready, if you got that pulled up, we can go ahead and do that, and then we'll pick it right back up with Mr. Will Clay. So. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 13 of The Couch. And yo, happy new year to y'all. Uh, we didn't get to say that to y'all when new year dropped, but you know what I'm saying? Better late than never. We here. Happy new year to y'all. Here are the songs that you should be listening to that just dropped from AZ. Let's get into it. <laughs> First things first, we got a single from Cash Lansky dropping this week called Flex featuring Morgan Clay. Run that up. Be sure to go pre-save the link. The link is in his bio. Make sure y'all go pre-save that. Next, we got Two Shots by Ago featuring Askey. It's a little short project. It's two singles. So be sure to run that up and check it out. You can go. It's on all streaming platforms. So y'all have no excuse to not check that out. Next. And lastly, we got Jake F, who just dropped the music video for Pennywise. Yo, definitely check that out. His flow is ridiculous. I like it. That I like that track a lot. So make sure y'all go check that out. And to kick off this year in 2021, the Takeover Lounge has a special, special, special guest tapping in tomorrow at 8 p.m. And he goes by the name of Will Clay. He done. He did a lot, and you get to know. A lot more about them tomorrow if you tap in at 8 p.m. So be sure to be there. And yeah, we'll see y'all next week on episode 14 of The Couch. And make sure artists that you're tagging us in any of your drops, music videos, singles, uh, albums, EPs. We want it all, even our merch drop. If you got dropping some merch that you want people to know about, hit us up, tag us in your posts, and we, be, we will be more than happy to have y'all on The Couch for sure. So we'll check in with y'all next week. We out of here, man. Yo, we are back with Mr. Will Clay. Y'all know what it is. We're talking about everything and everything under the sun with his music, track and field, all that good stuff. So since we're back, Daniela, go ahead and take us to our next question. Okay, let's see here. Um, so going back to the being like an athlete, have you ever experienced or gone through an athletic depression? And did you rediscover yourself through your music with that depression? Uh, yeah. Yep, that was Kill Will. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was Kill Will for sure. Um, yeah, I, I was in the, I was in the like, a bad space from track, you know what I'm saying? And I had to like, yeah, I had to use music to really like get my emotions out and like, you know what I'm saying? Tell, not even like directly. Cause like the beauty about music is like, you don't have to directly say things. You could, you can play with your words mm. to tell stories without, saying exactly what you know it is and that and that's mm -hmm. i think that was um for for hip-hop i think that was part of the the beginning of hip-hop not even hip-hop but just like uh folk tales you know what i'm saying music music that even like slaves wrote back in the day they had to say things that weren't so like out there or else they slave masters was gonna catch on so right. They had to kind of like, they had to make songs that was kind of like a code. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In order, mm -hmm. and if you know, you know. Right. You know what I'm saying type of vibe. So, like, I think that that has bled into hip hop to where it's like, you know, we can we can talk about, you know, things that we're going through in life and put them in a way that if you're going through something or if you've been through something similar, you'll understand. But it's not very, it's not directly just telling you like you know what I'm saying exactly what it is. Right. That's 
it's so frustrating, I think, just as far as just looking at athletes and musicians and artists, the hip hop artists especially, just how we always get played, you know what I'm saying, in this industry game and how, you know, it feels like it's impossible to to overcome, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But being able to have a record label like Desert Water Records, having a platform like Takeover Media, you know, to actually help artists get to the destination that they want to be and be there to be like, yo, you don't, you're not in this alone. Like there's other people that are going through this. And I feel like, well, you're definitely one of those people that are making that change. You know what I'm saying? And how the industry moves. And like you said, if Drake decides to go independent, that's like a huge win. But I like my <laughs> nigga. <laughs> but right now we just gotta take the small wins and right now it's it's, it's definitely yeah. you will especially in arizona taking those that that small victory and taking that next step so i, I really really appreciate that man man yeah i feel like this this is what we all doing same with you 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 doing the same thing you know we 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 doing a lot with what we have mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and um, when you do a lot with what you have, you're going to get more. You know what I'm saying? And so we just got to keep going. You know what I'm saying? You do right by what you, you get. You pass that test, then you're going to get you gonna get to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. You Definitely. On that, so. Yo, so I, I really put on my journalism hat, and I told you I got on my journalism <laughs> bag. You know what I'm saying? With this, this interview today. But um, we got to go ahead and talk about uh, the dreads, man. I was looking back at some old interviews, and we talked about it before the show, but I need you to, to tell the people what, what happened to Dreaded Will. Man, yeah, I was – my dreads was swinging, too. I, they was like, yeah, get with it. Man, I used to be, you know what I'm saying, like having little girls twist my dreads, <laughs> make my dreads. Like, yeah, I had dreads for like – seven years probably a little bit longer than that. I had, I had him for a while right and then, uh i was uh i was still in college i was still in college i had this girl that i was dating you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and um i was really rocking with her she was right. cool you know what i'm saying <laughs> she was cool she was on the track team too i was rocking with she had just got on the team she transferred okay i'm like oh yeah that's me <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never been. I ain't never been on nobody, but I know. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we start we start fucking around, and uh, she was like, one day she was like, "Yeah, my parents don't really like guys with dreads." Hmm. And I was like, "For real? Like you're from you you from Florida? Like <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Florida got dreads?" <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, they don't really. They're not into that. They don't. They said they don't ever want me to bring a guy home that got dreads." Ooh. I'm like, dang, for real? Just make it, hold on, before you continue, did it make you feel some type of way to hear that? Yeah, because okay. because I knew my character, like. Right. I knew, I knew, like, I'm not, my, like, how can you attach a certain type of person to a hairstyle? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I done seen dudes with fades that's grimy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. right. I didn't see, I mean, shoot, look at what just happened the other day, you know what I'm saying, at the state capitol. Like, mm -hmm. you can't put, like, you can't put a, a, t a type of person to a look. Right. And so, yeah, I was like, that's just weird, but whatever, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it wasn't, no, it wasn't like a, it was just a casual conversation we had. Right. Was, and so we just, we had the conversation and I had ended up going home. I went home for some reason, like, I just went home to visit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had pulled up on my homie C Car. He a barber. Okay. We just go over there. He stay. He stay on the south side. We just go over there and kick it. You know what I'm saying. And uh, and that day I was just sitting there watching everybody get the haircut. And I was like <laughs> thinking about the girl and her like mm -hmm. what she said. And I'm like, man, look, I'm about to cut myself. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. so, so I tell my voice, he called like, hey bro, hey, I'm I need a cut. I need a haircut. He like, bro, stop playing. <laughs> and he pick up the scissors. He grabbed one of my dreads. He like, you like you for real? He thought <laughs> he like, no, no, I'm playing. Right. I'm like, no, I'm for real. So he he like slowly cut one off. Mm. And I didn't I ain't flinch. 
I was just like, yeah, like cut him. This and is. Then he was like, you for real? Like this nigga's not playing. Like <laughs> he really want to cut his hair. And so he just started cutting him, boom, cutting them all off. And in my head, I'm like, dang, like. The, the the girl wasn't the main reason, but she was part of the reason. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. she was part of the reason. And so I'm getting them cut, and I'm, like, looking in the mirror, like, dang, bro, I really don't got no hair on my head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I look crazy. Like, I, I wasn't used to how I looked. You know what I'm saying? I had to refine myself mm -hmm. without the dress. And uh, uh, fast forward, me and the chick, <laughs> we didn't even really end up rocking with each other. Ooh. We ended up on some foul shit. So like, oh, man. Yeah, so it was like, you know, but it was... <laughs> It was meant to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no. was, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, I bet you felt lighter, right? I mean, <laughs> no, I felt holding you down. <laughs> but I felt like that was my strength too, though. You know what I'm right. Saying? I felt like that was my strength too, though. Like, but yeah, it's it's uh yeah. Don't don't be doing nothing for no. <laughs> I'm, I'm married now, so I if my wife be like, yeah, you need, to, I'm like, okay, cool, yeah. yeah. Right, right. But for some like, yeah, no. Don't. How do about that. uh, are we gonna see a, a dreaded will maybe in the future here? Maybe 2022, we gonna see dread wills. Yeah, I think he's back. Oh, let's get it. <laughs> let's get it. You're already here <laughs> first. We got the exclusive right here. <laughs> dreaded wills coming back, y'all. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't blink. <laughs> don't blink. <laughs> I'm gonna need a few years though till I'm swinging. Hey, facts, facts. We gotta start with a little twist, you know, as we go, as we go. <laughs> Give me some time. It's a process. It's a whole process. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um. So we're gonna bring this question back, like we always do. So, Let's do you do think it. any superhero, um, how would you say, like trait or power? Power. Yeah, what power. would you pick? Yeah. Um, I would pick the ability to teleport, like pop up wherever I wanted to pop up. Facts. Yeah, I would, no more plane tickets. Yeah, no plane <laughs> tickets. I could, I could, I could literally like, I could see my family more. Mm. I can make more plays. Facts. I could be wherever I want to be when I need to be there. If I needed to go to like Paris right now to go pick out some fabric for my line, for my clothing brand, I could just mm -hmm. pop out, go out there, do that, pop up on my mom the <laughs> next hour. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go out to uh, Italy, go get a, you know, some like some pasta real quick because I wanted pasta today. I'll be awesome, like, I'll be moving, bro. I'll be everywhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in yo right. He'd be like, "Yeah, what are you doing the podcast?" For sure, I'm, I'm, I'm about to be there. Facts. Like, hey, just give me, give me one second. I'll be right there. Give me a second, bro. I'm there. You know what I'm saying. You coming with your pasta, your boiled pasta, right there? <laughs> like, yeah, hey, I just what's up? You want some? I'm not get that one killed. Yeah, man, that's what I would be though. For sure. I feel that. That's a good one. Yeah, what what other one did we hear in 2020 that was pretty good? We were like, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, mind reading. Mind reading. Um, I think that, I feel like I uh, mind reading is probably the best one and teleportation. If I can have both of those things, I think that'd be cool. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to read nobody mind. Yeah, see, I, I would feel that. I would feel that. I don't. I don't want to. I read their mind. <laughs> I don't, don't want to know. I don't want to know because if I know, it could probably like, yeah, it could. It could. I could. I could see this going bad either way. I mean, I could be like, yo, my girl, I'd be like, yo, how'd I look in this? Does it look cool? And I can read her mind. She'd be like, oh, this dude look goofy as hell. All right. <laughs> hey, what did you say? What did you, you just say? You was <laughs> Yeah, you thought she was on the fly. Yeah, she like, yeah, that is good. That's that's fly. But you read her mind. She's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like, you lying. I know you lying because I could read your mind. I'll be walking out the door. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Oh, that would be bad. But the good, yeah, you know, the you could take the good with the bad. But yeah, 
I feel it. Because what would be one of the cons of teleporting? I don't know. Maybe a glitch in the system. I don't know. You might just stuck. Concept right. of time. Yep. Ant Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. You'll be caught up in the Ant Man world. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Are you a Marvel fan, Will? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not like all the way like you know what I'm saying tapped into it, but I I watch the movies though. Facts. All right, you know. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Because the, the new Marvel series that are coming out this year in 2021, they look, they look pretty bad. Yeah, they look crazy. Are they doing another Black Panther? Uh, that's what I heard. That's what they're saying. There's a possibility. So. And then we got a, a, a Scarlet Witch film coming out. That's going to mm. be dope. Okay. Um, all, Black, Black Widow, whole film about her. I mean, it should, should, should be smooth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm be on I'm be on the lookout for that for sure. Do you check out uh Soul this this holiday season? Man, I love that movie, bro. Yeah, that opened my eyes to a lot. Just like self looking at myself, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and just really like trying to use my time the right way while I'm here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. like, not get too caught up in like the shit that don't matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And just like trying to focus on what really do, like family, you know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and just trying to do right by people. And, you know, just, yeah, that was a solid movie. I feel like, like, it's a cartoon, but that's geared towards adults, for real. I feel like that's geared towards adults. I was about to say the same mm-hmm. thing, man. Yeah. I have a, I have an 11 year old sister, and she watched it, and I'm like, what, what, what you- business does she got? <laughs> Why the, like, she probably sitting here thinking like, damn, what the heck? My, me over here crying in the corner. Like, right. I'm perfect. I don't got no purpose. It's sad. <laughs> like, what's, what's, the wrong, what's wrong with my brother? <laughs> yeah, she's like, it's a cartoon. Like, right. <laughs> she's looking at the little, yeah, the little blue people. Like, right. That's all she's <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's facts. Danielle, what did you like about it? I think it was the timing and message. Because mm. it came, like, at the end of the year when any, like, people were losing interest in themselves. At the same time, they weren't really thinking about, like, how can they grow from, you know, 2020 onwards. Mm, so right. for that to be, like, I mean, Pixar, they're very strategic with everything that they put out. Yeah. And Jamie Foxx as well, like, as the main character being such an influential role, he mm-hmm. killed it. So, yeah. I mean, I cried like probably five times throughout the movie. So. <laughs> it happens, you know. Yeah. Facts. That, that it was deep. It was so deep. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but it was dope. It had a great message behind it, and like like my mom said, so yes, enjoy life. You know, your purpose is to live. You feel me? Yeah. So that's all. That's all it is. For sure. Something so small can be so impactful. It's crazy. So yeah. crazy. So I want to get back into the music aspect of things with Will because I feel like this is your your coming your coming out party in the sense of you know 2020 was like okay yeah I'm here I just dropped three projects was good mm-hmm. but now I just saw on your Instagram today Twitch mm-hmm. is gonna be you're partnering with Twitch to broadcast your whole next project yeah yeah so how, how did that come about what can you leak some exclusives out or are we gonna have to just sit and wait. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just signed a contract. I just signed a contract like a couple of days ago. Ooh, congrats to that, man. Cheers. Yeah, appreciate awesome. it. So like, yeah, I'm just I'm about to give people just that that insider's view of the process, you know what I'm saying, that goes into like me making a, an album, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um collabing with different producers. I'm gonna I'm gonna give people the chance on Twitch to like if you want to send me beats, like send me beats right now. I, you know what I'm saying? I'll cut some to them. And I think it'll be cool to get people's like feedback right away. You know what I'm saying? Rather mm-hmm. than when the music is already out, which is be, it'll be dope to do that. Um, Definitely. And it's cool because I got a studio at the crib. So like I, I'll be comfortable in, in my crib. You know what I'm saying? Just giving people that inside, you know what I'm saying? Inside view and just having fun with it, you know what I'm saying? Having For fun sure. with it. And um, taking inspiration from 
you know, from other people, just getting a spark from, from other people. Sometimes when you're in the studio by yourself, you know, it can get monotonous to where mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I done made I done made a record, you know what I'm saying, about that already. Like right. I need in it I need some new inspiration. But like right now, it's tough to go out and get inspiration because you can't really go nowhere. Right. Man, like I can't just go like experience I can't just go to LA and just experience shit for a week no mm -hmm. more when, you know before i could do that and then i you know I, that's those are things that i could put into my music right um so like yeah just taking inspiration from other people and and letting that you know take me to different po more moments and points in my, in my in my own life to where you know, i can make music about that so yeah twitch twitch like they super dope for that you know what i'm saying for oh yeah I'm gonna probably be on there like every day. That's so every, dope. Every day, just cutting records, and um, yeah, just letting people see that. I yeah, probably have, I probably have some people pull up on me, like producers and artists, like pull up on me. You know what I'm saying? That's so dope. That's gonna be fire. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. So, so with that, with the contract, is it like um, you got you have to film every session, or like what's the setup like for you, no. like? I don't gotta film every session. Okay. I can film whatever, like whatever I'm comfortable with or whatever right. I want. Um but uh yeah, I just gotta like for the most part of the album, you know what I'm saying, just mm -hmm. allow people to to see the process of it. Yeah. You know, and, and just mm -hmm. see like even even if it's just me watching music videos to get inspiration. You know what I'm saying? If it's just that, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be different types of things. Sometimes I might just be listening to beats. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying sometimes I might be cutting records. Um, sometimes I might have a producer here and we just like freestyling, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so like it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of different vibes, but all of that goes into like making a project. So it does. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, you know, who are consumers, they just they just see the the final outcome mm -hmm. and think it'll be dope for people to see you know, what actually goes into it. Cause it's a lot that goes into it. Definitely. Um, hours and hours and, and a lot of details, you know, and, and tweaks and, and things like that. Little sounds like that you probably wouldn't even hear, mm -hmm. but like, you know, I hear it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? You, some, someone might not hear it, but they'll feel it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just things like that, that I think would be dope for people to get that. You know what I'm saying? That type Definitely. Of, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just inside scoop. So I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, one, it's gonna be dope. One thing I like about Will, he keeps saying cutting records. I'm like, damn, boy, we back in the '90s, my G. We cutting records. <laughs> 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 yeah, we cutting records. On <laughs> Will still cutting records, man. Y'all, y'all not on his level no more. He got to, he got, he's cutting records. Where y'all at? Y'all downloading? <laughs> cutting these records. Straight up, we cut them over here, man. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I think that's so dope with Twitch. I think you doing it as well. I mean, I think it's just so dope because now when people hear that album or that project that you dropped, they're like, oh, I remember that session when I was there and it's live. And I was mm -hmm. like, or even like if there's like a little inside joke between y'all and that those viewers, those Twitch viewers are like, ah, well, we'll back at it again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was a part of that moment. Like they was a part right, of that moment. To be a part of that. Like I think that's crazy genius. I like that. That's a great move, man. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be I'm dope. I'm sure tapped in. I'm gonna be up in there every time. I got my yeah. Twitter notifications on for Will Clay. I'm gonna be yeah, in there. Yeah, tap in, man, yeah, for sure. Facts. I might need some bars. You know what I'm saying? You might have to slide me a few bars. And you know what I'm saying? I'll throw them in the record. Don't encourage him, Bill. Don't encourage him. Look at who, who are you talking to? Who? Me? No. You're gonna be my ghost, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me to ghost right for you, you man. Like no. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Hey cool. man, look, desert water, we don't, we don't, we don't, yeah, we don't got ghost riders. Oh, let them know. Let them know. Yeah, desert water, desert water ain't got no ghost riders. Like everybody, everybody, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pen, I'm the real everybody's rider, right pen here. is like that. Everybody's <laughs> pen is like that at Desert Water Records. You know what I'm saying? So who's with the, who's on Desert Records right now? Desert Water Records right now. Uh, me, J Waves, Don P. Okay. And then Mitch is um, Mitch is uh, we just brought him on as our president. 
Ooh. Yeah, but we can't sign Mitch because he he signed the 400 records. So like. Okay. Yeah. So like he 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 still 400, but he just a president. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Shout out Mitch, man. Is is it dope seeing like being able to grow with somebody that you like been with since forever? Mm-hmm. For like sure. you, J Wave. You said J Waves, Don P, right? Mm-hmm. Don P and Mitch. Yeah, and just all y'all just that's crazy. It's it's crazy, but when you see somebody at a young age and you know they got talent, like it's not that crazy. Like you mm-hmm. feel like it's mm-hmm. it's just a timing thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay, like dang, now your time is now. You know what I'm saying? But I saw it back then, but we just wasn't ready for it back then. Like now is the time. You know so so like I. I see everybody up making moves, and I'm just like, yeah, like I saw that, bro. Right. But I saw it. You know what I'm saying, and now the world get to see it. You feel Definitely. Me? It's it's a dope it's a dope thing to see. It's like you know, even with sports. You know what I'm saying, like growing up with, I grew up with a lot of the greatest athletes to come out of Arizona and play oh, with yeah. them, ran track with them. You know what I'm saying, like. Deion Jordan, Cameron Jordan, Marcus mm. Wilson, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, Jared Bayless, you know what I'm saying? Mm. These dudes, they're like, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Great. You know, and I was I was right there with them. So, like, at that time, I knew they was cold, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> like, later on, the world got, the whole world got to see that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's a It's a dope thing to be able to be around talent at the infant stages of it. Mm-hmm. And, and then like see it when it blow up it's like dang that's crazy facts I like yeah. that me and Daniela were talking before you got on we were debating whether or not where are you from on um, Wikipedia <laughs> it says uh, you're from Tucson, Tucson Arizona but when you talk you you say you're from Phoenix, you Phoenix. Yeah. I was born in Tucson yo shout out to the home team let's get it Tucson Arizona <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia is right <laughs> I was born, yeah, I was born in Tucson. Uh, my mom went to U of A. She had me when she was in college. That's dope. And then, like, right after right after I was born, we moved to Atlanta. Oh, okay. lived in Atlanta. We lived in Atlanta for, like, a year or two. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then, then we moved to Phoenix. Wow. You know what I'm but when I, when I moved to Phoenix, like, we bounced around a lot. Like, mm. we'll be, we'd be on, like, the east side. Then we'd be on the west side. And then um, we lived in Tempe for a little bit. And then a majority of, like, my childhood was on the south side, though. Okay. So, like, okay. where I, where a lot of my memories come from is, is the south side of Phoenix, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why I always go back to that, you know what I'm saying? That's where, that's where my real roots are. Everywhere else right. was kind of just bouncing around. But I really got to lay a foundation on the south side, so. Definitely. Definitely. That's so sick. Yo, Tucson, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. <laughs> AZ Love, Phoenix, you, Tucson. You, like, you grew up in Tucson? I've been here, man. I've been here for Are you in Tucson time. right now? I'm in Tucson right now. You see, you see, the, you see yeah. what it's right there? You see what it's right there? Wildcat Country. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's my up? And my brother both went to U of A. Oh, wow. That's so <laughs> dope. Like, I, they was like, you got to go to U of A. I was like, nah, I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I like, yeah, let me get up way far away from freaking <laughs> with the Florida. My man was. <laughs> hey, nah, at that time, bro, in, on the, like, in Phoenix, it was just, it was no need to stay in Phoenix, oh. bro. Yeah, no, I don't blame you at it all. Was crazy, bro. Like, it was just, it was just a crazy time. And, and that was part of the reason why I left college or left high school early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It started to like get when it start to get close, you know what I'm saying? You start to lose homies. Yeah. You know I'm saying? And and it's just like real close. It start to get closer and closer. You gotta understand that and know that and be able to see that and know like, okay, like, yeah, I can't I yeah, can't like continue to be in this space because I'm going I'm gonna be next. You know what I'm so like it was the smartest thing for me to do, you know. Yeah, I mean? definitely. Like the people around me knew that too. Like my mom, she was like, "It's time for you to go," because mm-hmm. it, it started to like, you know, she started to kind of see how I was moving. My coaches was like, "Bro, you getting college letters every day?" You know what I'm saying, wow. they bringing me letters every day, like 
any school. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, like, just go. <laughs> Facts. And just go. And I was, you know, I was doing, I was doing cool in school, and I was able to like, I had all my credits that I needed. So I was like, shit, yeah, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't, I ain't shoot, lived in any since since then. I I go back a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm still out there, but yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, just trying to make make moves and obviously you know be where i need to be to excel you know whether it's wh- wherever my coach is or wherever i need to be to you know to make music mm. you know I, I put myself in that in that uh space definitely that makes sense yeah. to me man i'm glad you did that too yeah, yeah. It, it it uh it was the best thing because you know even after i left it was just like talking on the phone with the homies and just like hearing you know, things going on and then seeing like just more of my homies go down, whether it was prison or like dying. Mm-hmm. It was just like, man, like, I was with you every day. Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's the like the crazy part. That's that's just why I feel like this. It's just a it's a purpose and like a, a blessing that that has been put on me. Like this, Definitely. these things that I do, I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because. I ain't really supposed to be here in, the, mm-hmm. in as far as the odds of it, you know what I'm saying? Right. As as the situations. So that only to me, that only means that it's something that I that I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so that's why whatever I'm doing, I just I'm always like full, like full fledged, all gas with it. Thanks. Yep. I like that a lot. Okay. Huh? You got any, you got any one more question? Um you got any more questions? Cause I feel like this is gonna be a two hour special. I'm okay with that. I know. <laughs> well, you okay with that, man? I don't know if you yeah, got man, any more. Here, man. We bother. <laughs> <laughs> we bother, man. Let's see here. So what has been the worst injury that you've overcome and what was the recovery of that like, both mentally and physically? Um, I done had a lot of injuries, mm. a lot of injuries. The biggest thing with injuries is trying to keep your mind right. Mm. Because like, when you get injured, it's like, it's like, uh, let's say for, for this podcast, is this, this a pod, you call this a podcast? Yeah, we can call it whatever we want. What do you call it, though? <laughs> uh, show? <laughs> show. All right, let's say the show. My part. This show. Um, This show is your your thing, your main thing. Mm-hmm. And one day, out of nowhere, everything's going good. One day, out of nowhere, your camera, your mic, your lights, it just stopped working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But... You can't just go buy another one. Mm. The only way that it's gonna start working again is just with time, mm. and and you trying to like fix it. But you can only do so much every day. You, know mm. you can't fix it in one day, right? You mm. know what I'm saying, and it's like this is your thing. This is what you do, mm-hmm. you know what I'm and and this is your passion. But you can't do it until the camera and the mic and the lights get fixed. And that's like, Hey, Willie Buck. Hey, Mitch, Mitch is hitting me right. It's Mitch right here. I'm on this. Oh, there's Mitch right there. (laughs) No, it's good, Mitch. (laughs) Oh, what's up, y'all? Yeah, we chilling. (laughs) Hey, I have a good show. I'm going to tap in. I'm going to tap in with you, bro. Yeah. Um, but she is like, when she, when you can't do that, it can just like put a damper on you. You know what I'm saying like because it's like you know what you're capable of. You know when them lights cut on and that camera cut on and that mic, you know it's I'm like I'm me right. about to do my thing. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like you comfortable. But when you can't, it's like man, what do I do? Like, right. I, this is my these 
this is like my life. My life is is based off of me being able to run track. That's right. Mm-hmm. My not my whole life, but a big part of it. You know yeah. Saying? So and so like that's tough. But at that point, you have to be mentally strong to be able to be like, okay, like it's gonna be a process to get back, but I'm gonna get back. You know mm-hmm. And I'm gonna learn from this. You know what I'm saying? So like whenever I have gotten injured, I always come out better because I have to like really dig deep to like work on the small things. I, I can only, mm-hmm. you can only work on the small things at that point. It's like every day you can just get a little bit, 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 bit until you right. know, you're, you're back. And um, that always has just made me better. So I feel like Whenever I get injured, it's like something. It was some. It was meant to happen. Like I needed to sit down for a little bit, mm. and I needed to like recalibrate. You know what I'm saying? Right. So mm-hmm. I take, I take them, I take them. Uh, I'm, it's hard, but you know, I, I try to take them uh, in an optimistic way, in, right. in a way that I know that you know this is gonna be better. You know, once I get that out of this hole. Mm. Yeah. That's fine. You know, I should we probably should say this, but Danielle's background is in uh, athletic training and massage therapy. So I that's... said that earlier. <laughs> I want to use it. I want to use it. You must have been said that in the intro. Like, how you going just <laughs> see a whole trainer? <laughs> 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 Wow. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't want to cut you off and be like, yo, hey, yo, so Daniel, Daniel is an athletic yeah. trainer. <laughs> uh, every time I make a like, yeah, injuries, she's back there like, yeah, yeah she's like, yeah. <laughs> she knows, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. I think she's the same. She exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> she know what I'm talking about. Yeah. She, uh, did, she, did he preach to, was that like what you would say, Daniela, too? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially like what I see because a lot of my friends did track, and when they got injured, they were just you know it destroyed them. But at the same time, it they were at a point where their ego was getting affecting their performance. Mm. So it was like a recalibrate of like okay, you know, let me humble myself so I can perform at my best. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but back when I was playing high school, yeah, I mean, I would not sit down for nothing. Like, even if it was, like, something as small as, like, yo, you need to sit out for a day. It's like, nah, coach, put me in right now. Like, I don't got a day. You know what I mean? Yep. That's how that's how your mind is. But, like, you know, once, once you get through that, you probably come out better on the other side, you know. But yeah. it just, it's a mind thing and an ego thing. Yeah, like she said. Mm-hmm. That's but the body is a really uh special thing. Like you gonna always bounce back. Definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, Definitely. the body is just like yeah, it's one of the greatest creations of all time. It is the greatest creation of all time. Like yeah, the that shit. The way that shit like just heals is crazy. It's just you just gotta be patient. Yeah, no, that it is crazy. I laughed because uh, last year or a couple a couple months ago, I was playing basketball. I haven't played basketball in forever. <laughs> Oh shit! And um, <laughs> thank God I have Daniela on like my phone, and it's like, yo, one call, one two buttons, clicks, I'm good. But I was like, had a full body cramp. This was like summer, right? Or like, I, I don't know yeah. when it was, but it was hot. I was dehydrated. I'm like ba- basically crying on Facetime to Daniela. I'm like, yo, help me! Like, I, I can't move. And she's like, yo, you need to get the yeah. foam roller. You need to roll out. Like, it was just bad. So now for Chris, for like. Just a just because gift, she gave me a foam roller, so I be ah. all the time. <laughs> he said, I was hurting, I was hurting, man. Like, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. yeah, I bet that was painful, bro. Now, what was what was like one of the crazy, like, have you ever cramped up like that, that bad ever? For sure, especially in Phoenix. I mean, it's For hot sure. as hell, and Florida. I, I be cramping up like. Man, it's crazy. Like, and it'll be randomly. Like, it won't be during. Like, when I'm doing something, it'll be like after, like, mm-hmm. like thirty minutes to an hour after. I'm like thinking I'm chilling. <laughs> and next thing, my whole leg is just ah. You know, and it's yeah. like 
caught you off guard to where you just panic like <laughs> you know what I'm saying you don't know what to do <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> that whole jerk thing is like oh yo no. <laughs> man yeah that's one of the worst pains for sure definitely oh yeah it's just so bad but thank god for daniela and trainers like her that look out for everybody god without you we'd be broken <laughs> everything Back. everything she's like yeah no cap you ain't lying y'all would be broken <laughs> where, was you a trainer? where was you a trainer at um so i'm going to gcu to do the athletic training but i've done like the physical therapy tech um i shadowed for the u of a hockey team out here Oh. And then um, got my massage therapy license. Okay, so you are in t- you're in Tucson. Mhm. Oh, for sure. Whenever I'm in Tucson, I'm I'm hitting your line for sure. You you yeah. must. It's a must. <laughs> you must. It's a must. I heard a lot of great things from her yeah. about her from yeah. Asky, from who else? <laughs> the enzyme to everybody. <laughs> Like, what's the scene like in Tucson, man? I ain't like. Oh, you, know, you ain't tapped in. I ain't been out there. Yo, we got we got to tell you who to look out for. I feel like it's our duty to do that. <laughs> yeah, we might have to bring them over to Desert Water Records. No, I think they'd be down with that. I mean, you definitely got to talk to the young boy Asky. Asky, mm-hmm. Asky, he's definitely up and coming. A S K E. Yeah. A S K E. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'll shoot you all the links if you if you're cool with that. Me blowing up your phone, but, yep. <laughs> but for sure, ask you got to be the one. I okay. mean, you got to definitely link up with him. And then Cash, Cash Lansky, mm-hmm. Cash Lansky. Oh, yeah. yes, oh, okay. he's fire. Cash Lansky. And then Big Mama Trauma for sure. If you can get a record with Big Mama Trauma, I love her. You would love her. You would love her energy. You would love her energy. Big Mama Trauma. Big Game Mama, Mama Trauma. Trauma. I'm already scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. She's, she's the, the biggest. She's person the biggest ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to have to see about Big Mama Trauma. <laughs> you definitely got to tap in. I'm sending you links tonight. And you, you tell me what you think. <laughs> you sound like, yeah, they going to feel her. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, they are. Okay. Big Mama Trauma. Yes. That's just to name a few. We, we could go off. Okay. We want to talk well, about Purdue. Manny, That's- producer, Manny Meg. Yeah. Manny Meg. Yeah, I need to tap in with more producers at AZ. Yes. Manny, Manny Meg. Manny 98, Mag. baby. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I would even say Chris. Kind of by Chris. By Chris. Yeah, I'm going to say him. If you could, uh, send me those. Send me that. Uh, oh. We, we about to come up with a whole. We got you. Don't even worry about it. We got you. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to tap in. So talking about music as well right now, like as an athlete, because one of the hardest things for me when I was growing up in high school was like I had this identity as, yo, that's Z. He's the basketball player. And like, you know, I was I was good. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like it got to the point where I got old and I was like not I got older and was like, do I want to be like just Z, the basketball player of like my whole entire life? Like, is that like my purpose, I guess, or like, I know there's something more to me than just basketball. Was it, right. And music was that more to me. I mean, I didn't I didn't rap. I didn't produce. I mean, I just love talking to people about music. I love being on new artists. I love, you know, linking people together with new artists and putting people on. Yeah. So I stopped playing basketball my junior year of high school. And was like, you know what? I'm going to go full throttle on this music side of stuff. Okay. But for you, what was that like transitioning into an Mute as an athlete into an artist and doing both. Um. Well, I feel like I feel like it's the, as far as my purpose and just mm-hmm. I feel like it's bigger than both. It's bigger than music and track. You know what I'm saying? It's those are um, just vehicles, you know right? Mm-hmm. That I can. Um, that I can, uh, what's the word, like push my purpose through, mm. you know what I'm saying? But like, I I would never put myself in a box to, to be like, yeah, I'm Will the track athlete or I'm Will the right. 
artist, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Or or I'm Will the rapper, you know what I'm saying? Even like with my music, you can hear it. Like I don't I'm not gonna just make one type of, you know what I'm saying, sound. Right. Um I feel like I just feel like my purpose is just bigger than it's it's bigger than me, you know, mm-hmm. but it's bigger than just one one uh specific title. Right. You know, and I think that uh as time goes on, you know, there will be other other titles that may be, you know what I'm saying, put on me, but uh mm-hmm. it won't be what defines me, you know what I'm saying? It'll just be what I'm doing at that time, whether it's whether it's like entrepreneurship, business, whether it's philanthropy, you know, whether it's um just teaching, whatever it may be. Right. right? whatever it may be that's just gonna be you know a thing that that will is doing at that time to to, um to live out my purpose facts yeah I like that. That was a great answer to that. I feel like you practiced that before we even got on. He's like, I just <laughs> got up day. He's like, here we go. <laughs> he's, out in, he's out there in the I mirror. Was <laughs> I was waiting on that one. Me <laughs> and walking by <laughs> after him. Well, what you doing? I'm practicing. I'm practicing. Right. I'm practicing. I got my little notebook with my notes right over here. He's looking down on his phone. He's like, and then. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, and then, yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm a piece of all up. He's going to ask me this. Watch, he's going to ask me this. And I'm going to respond. That's a great answer, man. I love that. Yeah. No, that's, that's how I feel, though, man. I feel like that's everybody. I think we are we are in this really big, really, really, really big picture. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And the best thing that anyone can do is just is play play their part in, in the whole picture and and add to it, you know what I'm saying, in their specific mm-hmm. way, you know what I'm saying, and that that's everything from the sand on the beach to the birds in the air to the, everything, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. it plays its part in this beautiful picture, but you can, you can tarnish it, you know yeah. what I'm saying, like, like that shit that them people did in, at the Capitol, like, that is, that is, a t- like that's a tarnishing thing, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to this to this creation. Not not the not the acts of what they did, mm-hmm. but the 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 emotions in their hearts. Not like mm-hmm. like their their heart, like what you know what I'm saying led them to do that. That's right. the tarnishing part. Like you are not you're not supposed to have that type of feeling in your heart. Mm-hmm. And that's that's hate. And that's fear, you know what I'm saying? And that's not adding to this beautiful picture that we're in, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, that's that's not their purpose. Oh. <laughs> their purpose is not to do that. Mm-hmm. So, like, I feel like, yeah, it's our, it's just, you know, our duty, you know what I'm saying, to just do, be the best versions of ourselves, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and to, to do it in a, in a loving way. Mm-hmm. And, and shit after that, I mean, it's, it ain't really much else to it after that. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I'm about to get up and go to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I can go back whenever. Just tell me when <laughs> we'll all go. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got your passport, man, still from London. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> hey, you know what's crazy? I just got my passport uh, to Sierra Leone. What's that? Really? Yeah, really? that's that's where all my family from. Like my mom moved from Sierra Leone to to uh, Tucson. Wow. No way. Yeah, and so like, uh-huh. like that's you know my all my family. I'm the only I'm the only person in my family born in America. Wow. All my family was born in Sierra Leone and um in London. Wow. London, UK, and so. Yeah, bro. I had uh applied for my passport out there to that's so dope. To, to just like make it official and um planning to hopefully go back, go back that's out there. Dope. Not go back, but go there soon to visit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's dope. Yeah, man. 
it's uh I feel like that continent is just beautiful, but we just we don't we don't see uh we don't get to see the beauty of it. Nah. And 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 it's not like it's crazy like Tulum went like Tulum has blown up like I I believe it's after Nip did that video in Tulum. Okay, right, 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 right. I believe it's I believe it turned up after that. But like it's places like that that no one knew about. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And now everybody going there. And I feel yeah. like I feel like Africa is, is like on the way to that. That's dope. so many beautiful, places, so many beautiful places. It's gonna be a tourist attraction. Like it's gonna be yeah. a tourist attraction soon. like not just South Africa, but like other parts of Africa too. Yeah. I was on a I was on TikTok the other day and there was a a dude who lives in Africa and he was just like, yo, like we got water. Like what are y'all talking about? Like I we don't got water. Video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's yeah. right here. He's like, I don't know what they be showing you in the US. I mean, we not all like what they show you on the TV. Like we got functioning yeah. like yeah. country. Like we're good. Like <laughs> yeah, they functioning. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? I I live in San Diego right here, and it's like you know what I'm saying? You're going to see the good and the bad. Right. Know? Exactly. It's like that. It's like that everywhere, bro. Like, you can't, you can't just be thinking like Africa's on some like 25 cents a day, kid. <laughs> Fact. Yeah, and like, that's out. You know what I'm saying? Fact. Like, they was doing that and they wasn't even giving the money to the kids. You know that saying? ass. You know Joe Osteen, what's up? I got a problem. What's good? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> It's it's gonna it's gonna get to the point where they they can't hide it from us no more. Like, right, we, we gonna understand mm -hmm. the beauty of that of that continent. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah. It, Africa is beautiful. I can't wait to visit. I can't wait to move to Canada too. So that's gonna be. <laughs> I I've never been to Canada, man. I want to go there too. I want to go to. I, I don't know what Vancouver like, but I want to. Is Vancouver like more of the French side? No, it's on the west coast. What's okay? So, yeah, like two, no, actually, two or three hours from Seattle. Oh, oh man! Oh, how far is it from Toronto? Um, all the way on the opposite <laughs> side. That's yeah. on the other side. <laughs> yeah, by Michigan, huh? Uh, other side. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Toronto and so Toronto and Quebec and Montreal, all on the east coast. Okay. And then um, Vancouver's the farthest west, and then you have like Edmonton and um. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alberta, like right in the middle. Okay, that's dope. Yeah. You ever, uh, you ever went to Carabana? To where? Carabana. Mm mm. You never heard of Carabana? Mm mm. You heard of Carabana? <laughs> no. Am I supposed to know? <laughs> I, I thought you were singing Barry Man a little. Canadian thing. <laughs> Carabana. <laughs> Carabana is a Canadian thing, and that's why I want to go to Carab. That's why I want to go to Canada. What's is, there? That the What's big, there? What's is that the big um Caribbean festival that they have? Okay. Uh, it's a it's crazy. I I I just seen videos <laughs> and it just looked like the most lit like situation I've ever seen. And I, I believe uh Drake, whatever Drake's OVO weekend or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's around the same time. OVO festival, yeah. OVO festival oh. around the same time, and it's just crazy. Like that, I'm trying to go out there for that for sure. Hey, me, that's hey, when you go out in the summer, let's get it. Yeah, I'm gonna try to deal with you. Like, hey, you still good for Canada? Let me check my phone. That's <laughs> <laughs> time for it. I'm about to twenty when twenty twenty whatever when we were back from this whole thing. I'm I'm traveling. Y'all ain't gonna. Y'all are y'all uh y'all gonna take the vaccine? Think about, I have to. She has to. Yeah, I might, I might wait a little bit. <laughs> Are you scared? I'm not so much scared. It's just, I mean, I just see what's the what the situation looking like. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's gonna decide on my reaction. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was asking where. Are you scared? Because you got you. So you sound you about to get it soon. Yeah, I have to get it soon. So. Since we're working so closely, the clinic that I'm in, we do work with a lot of the elderly because um, oh. we're up in like Oro Valley area. Mm. Um, so that's like the elderly population. And so it like we technically have to, but we can decline it. But in a physical therapy clinic, you're going to be hands on with someone from like 730 in the morning till seven at night. So it's 
it's kind of ine- inevitable. Also, it's it's like a flu vaccine. You right. have to get it every year. And to be able to go in the hospital, because um, if I have to do rotation from the hospital, they have to have proof that you got it in order to work in there. Okay. Makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So I, okay. don't, I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah. I feel you. Well, are you getting it? Um, I wouldn't. Wa- I don't think I want to. <laughs> I don't think I want to. Honest, I, I, I feel like a lot of vaccines. Just from like my research, I'm not like Dr. Fauci or whoever you know what I'm saying. Right, 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 right. From my research, I feel like a lot of vaccines were created in a like a longer time frame to where they had more time to do mm-hmm. more testing and to like really get it down. <clears throat> and I think this one has just been created super fast. And so that I don't want to say nothing to like, yeah, no, no, no. Fear, to put fear, like make us scared of nothing. But um, I just feel like it's so fast to where there could be some mistakes that they have made that, um, people are going to feel the, the, you know, the backlash of that. And so, like, I don't know. Right now, I just think it's in the early stages, obviously, and they're still doing you know, they're still doing testing and stuff like that. Right. So by the time, like, we, you know what I'm saying, getting to, getting to get it, I feel like yeah. it's probably going to be cool. Yeah. But I, I'm still, like, you know, that, that was fast. How, <laughs> you know, I understand it was needed that fast. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's just like, dang. Yeah, no, nah, um, I get that. It's it's a it's also, you know what I'm saying? We might have we might have to take it to go to the Olympics, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I, I mean, like I'm not going to be like all those other people out there like, "Nah, I'm not doing that." I'm not uh, like, "All right, cool. Mm-hmm. You need me take it. I'll take it. Whatever, cool." I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, you know, I just I don't I just hope that there's no like Oh yeah, no. Nah. Crazy I feel like you know what I'm saying symptoms are not oh just like you know you gotta read the fine print. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, read. you ain't lying. You ain't lying. <laughs> you ain't lying at all. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, I feel that. Yeah. But we're gonna be a good cause then you know once this is all over, I'm going to Canada. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. Every time I post a picture of Vancouver, he's like, so when we're going? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to go. I'm trying to leave. I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> hey, you, well, hey, look up Carabana. Okay. Cool. I, I'll look I'm going to look, look it up, and I'm going to send you screenshots. and be like, yo, book yeah. the plane tickets. Let's get it. <laughs> Are we teleporting? We teleporting? I we forgot. Teleporting. We, teleporting. <laughs> we we in and out. All right. Let's do it. Right, my mom said I got to be home by 12. <laughs> I'm gonna get you back to the crib, bro. All right, say less. I'm with it. <laughs> hey, Will, there's anything you want to shout out before we head on out? Um, man, just shout out uh all the all the artists in AZ. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of them to name right now, but a shout out to all the artists in AZ. Um, everybody doing their thing. I think it's a it's a great time right now for artists in AZ. I think we're starting to to gain a uh, attention of of uh the world mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. shout out to uh desert water records <laughs> i do shout out <laughs> shout out to um just all the different shows and podcasts and and people like you that give us a platform and you know to tell our stories mm-hmm. um shout out to everybody that's trying to make it make it work right now in the world. You know what I'm saying? We're going through some shit right now. It's probably the worst that we ever been through in, in yeah. the world. You know what I'm saying? In our in our lifetime. Definitely. So, shout out to everybody that's trying to trying to make it work right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Don't don't give up. You know what I'm saying? Keep, keep pushing. Um and go make it through. I'm you know with saying? that. Yeah. For sure. Where can they follow you at Will? Uh Instagram at Will Clay C L A Y E. Uh, for my last name, uh, YouTube at Will Clay, um, Twitter at William Clay. I had to give him my full name on Twitter today. Somebody had to, <laughs> I had to give him the full guppy. 
Uh, yeah, so Twitter, you know what I'm saying, Instagram. Can YouTube. we can we change your Twitter name? Can we do a uh, Sir William Clay? Oh, <laughs> uh, we could. Let's do let's do that one. Let's do that. And I like Twitch. This. Twitch and- it will. It will on Twitch. Yeah. You know what I'm, I'm about to I'm about to be on tw- on Twitch like daily. So I'm there. I'm for that. I'm yeah. off for that. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> so you can follow us at Lounge Takeover. You can follow me at Z underscore underscore G I V. You can follow Daniela at Danny Roll Takeover. And do you want to tell them how to spell it? Oh. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> In the world without the O. And then is it just regular takeover? I think so. No, uh, you might be tripping. You don't all- know your handle. <laughs> I never you got- know. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't want anybody following me. You guys yeah, cannot I'm follow me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Man, you can follow Mankind at the Mankind Podcast or at Pod Crafty if he lets you. If you're that honorable, he'll let you in to the club because it's private. But yeah, hey yo, should we shout out Clubhouse one time for making this happen? Clubhouse, hey, we yes. got we got to do a Clubhouse. Yeah, I'm with it. We can do that for sure. We can get on that. Yeah, we got to so make shout it. Out Clubhouse. Shout out everybody that made this happen. Uh, truly, it was really. I don't know if you know DJ yours truly at all, Will, but you definitely got to tap in with him. He's an A and R out here from Tucson, okay. but uh, he was he was really pushing me to. When we're in the clubhouse, he's like, "Hey, yo, ask Will for an interview." He's texting me. He's like, "Ask Will for an interview." Yo, why you didn't ask him? Yo, why you didn't ask him yet? Yeah. And then I was like, "Shout out to Jules too. She had Jules too. Her thing. She was all up. She was all up on here too. Uh, before we the the season ended, season oh, yeah. three, the season two ended. So we got her on here. She yeah, was shout out Jules, man." So, yeah, we, we tapped in, y'all. So, we're going to get up out of here. I know we've been here for like an hour, 30 minutes. But, yo, Will is definitely worth the time to talk to. He, a lot of insight, a lot of stories, fun moments. You know what I'm saying? But we'll catch y'all next Friday, 8 p.m. Uh, we got a Patreon, by the way. It's a soft. This is a soft little uh, announcement. If y'all want to go follow that Patreon, we got to get some bread up in here. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> besides that, man. <laughs> we do have a Patreon, so y'all go ahead and check us out on Patreon, and we are out of here. Roll that outro, and Will, you better not hang up. <laughs> <laughs>